The only easy day was yesterday. Heads up, get your eyes open. Stop trying to hide from the pain. Heads up, eyes open. ATC may hold us to the south and have us do a south-north. The jumpers are huddled up on the ground near a parked helicopter as they finalize gear inspections. Stay extended. Stay extended. Ready for me to come down? Ready. Coming down. Here they simulate the plan for exit, canopy opening, and in-flight maneuvers. If we're doing hard turns. Mimicking their planned actions physically and verbally, counting and repositioning themselves to ingrain and review the jump plan. Come right, coming right, coming right. We'll try to bang in a 180. Yep. If we can't fit in a 180, no issues. You know, we both can land either side. A fear of falling comes naturally to almost everyone. What does not, however, is confidence and composure when free-falling through the sky headed straight for the ground. This confidence is earned through rigorous training and education evolutions. I'm Daniel Fletcher. Today, we go on location with the U.S. Navy's elite parachute demonstration team, the Leapfrogs. We'll meet up with former guest Luke Beshi and the rest of the Leapfrogs as they prepare to jump into Sam Boyd Stadium for the USA Rugby Sevens Championship match in Las Vegas, Nevada. These are the guys I'm looking for. There it is. How's that going? I don't think hey. I've met you. No, I don't think so. I meet the team in the hotel lobby before walking outside to discuss the day's plan. All of them dressed to match in leapfrog uniforms or custom navy blue and yellow jumpsuits, professional and focused. Perfect. This is Sean. He's going to be our DZSO. Cool. So he will be After introductions, we walk out to the parking structure and circle up to hear from the jump master. He gathers the team to confirm the day's schedule and brief the group about any updates. Uh, general overview for the day today, we're going to head over to Sam Boyd Stadium. We're going to do our site survey. Uh, as soon as we get there, we'll link up with the guys from USA Rugby Sevens. Uh, the helicopter is going to land at 12. 05, if everything looks good, winds look good, weather looks good, uh, then we're going to take off at 1250, streamers 1255, 1300 TOT, 4500 feet for the three of us getting out for the practice jump into Sam Boyd today. Uh, after that, we'll just get a good wrap up debrief, um, make sure everything is prepped and ready for tomorrow, and then go from there. Uh, any questions, concerns? After the briefing, the team loads their gear into three vans and we drive out of the hotel yep. parking structure. During the convoy to the stadium, the three vans move as one unit, unwilling to separate. The ordinary act of following a friend of the game becomes today's first display of coordinated precision, movement, and tactics. We arrive at the stadium and are ushered through parking security. Hey guys, so just as a reminder, so this grass is these guys' livelihood, so don't step on the lines. After a short walk, we arrive Stay at the edge, the edge of the field. Like that as we're walking around. The grass in almost neon green, a buzz with turf workers and freshly sprayed game day paint. Eh, ready to go? Yeah, I think so. It's looking, I mean, today's looking good. All right, so you need anything from our side? You know, I think we're good right now. The team now. is joined on the field by one of the event directors. We'll discuss any contingencies and do our brief and our dirt dive. And then weather looks good, so we're going to definitely push forward for the practice jump for today. Yeah, and what's the protocol for tomorrow in terms of weather uh, and timing? For us, really, you just have to let us know, like, when exactly do you want us out of the airplane? Mm -hmm. When exactly do you want to start the anthem? Yep. I mean, we kind of work it backwards from when do you want us touching down on yep. the ground. Yep. So That's perfect, because whenever you get me the schedule, we can kind of go from there. Because we'll sort of deconstruct and say, okay, they want us on the ground at 1306. So that means from 5,000 feet, you're going to depart the plane at yeah. this time. It should be time to the point where he hits his last note, flag touches down. Yep. One last time, ladies and gentlemen, your United States Navy parachute team, the leapfrogs, Perfect. turn, wave, yep. crowd goes crazy, yep. and we Perfect. haul off the field. I got your music just like an hour ago, so I'll load that in. When do you typically play that? Generally, one minute prior to them departing. The After initial aircraft. discussions when about timing, kicks off. we turn our attention to the landing zone. Thanks, boys. We appreciate you guys yeah. coming out, man. It's going to be good. Yeah. So whenever you guys are doing site survey, you're looking at stadium shape, wind. What other stuff are you looking for? Obstacles, cables, you know, light poles, things like that. And then depending on where the wind's coming from, it's going to dictate the pattern that we're going to fly. Obviously, we want the safest pattern possible with the best crowd perspective. Is there any issue that you guys do beforehand? To what extent can you kind of plan beforehand? We always take a look ahead of time just to kind of have a general overview and idea of the area and right. 
We use Google Earth, things like that, to kind of get that 3D look at the stadium as well. So kind of just like last minute checks, were we right about what we thought? Yeah. Are there, there other obstacles? The only thing that you couldn't really see on the imagery is whenever they have the field goal nets. Right. You can't really see the nets on imagery, but you it's kind of assume. if it's an up-to-date image, whatever. Right. You kind of assume that they're there, but this one, the main light post, three on that side, two on this side. Light out. And like Luke was talking about earlier about um, looking around the stadium and assessing all the obstacles, it's kind of a double assessment of how does it affect our pattern as far as safety, but also how is it going to affect the winds in here so we know which areas have the gentlest wind and which places are going to be relatively turbulent. One element has more impact on the success and safety of a parachute demonstration than anything else. Wind. The team must monitor the constantly changing wind direction and speed at all altitudes in order to ensure the parachutes generate the lift required to safely fly them to the ground. Do you guys find maybe give me a little unpack of the tool that you're using? Just sure. We're looking at it's like a, a local tool. aviation tool. It yes. gives us every thousand feet what the winds are being recorded at, a direction and a speed. Real time ish, basically. Yeah, yeah. and it, it'll actually forecast through. But the thing that we run into is, uh, unlike going to a skydiving drop zone that's normally co-located with an airport, right. we're actually, yeah, as you see right now, at a stadium. There is no sensors here grabbing that information, so we have to do a, a mixture of reading those numbers, but then also getting our own data locally. So that's what we're going to do before we jump. Mm -hmm. um, that gives us the time, assessment right? of exactly where we're at. They get to see what's going on up above the stadium, and then us on the ground, we're relaying to them what direction the wind's coming out of, because it could completely switch. So what we want to do is pick the best direction for them to land into the wind. We choose the direction they land on the ground from what we're feeling on the ground, and then the streamers tell them what they need to do up above so that they can set up for the ground landing. The final wind assessment is taken with a remarkably low-tech yet critically reliable tool, streamers. These highly visible fabric strips, similar to what you would see atop goalposts, are dropped from the sky by the team just before leaving the aircraft. The direction of these streamers is observed by the team on the ground and radioed back to the team in the air as a final check for conditions at altitude. Talk about entering the stadium, we're looking at like the 50 yard line is basically where we come in, straight towards the 50 yard line and then fly the pattern within the side, the bowl of the stadium. Oh wow, okay, so, so I didn't realize you guys were, were making turns inside the yeah. stadium. Yep. Are you guys normally aiming for dead center of the stadium or no, the field? No, we actually try to stay off the paint. They work really hard to make this paint look really nice. So, yes. so we, we try to stay off the paint as much right, as possible. Right, right. We receive a call. Yeah. The helicopter is on its way. Yeah. Helo's inbound. Helo's inbound. We we'll kind of finish the walk around right. and uh, head out and start prepping. While the site survey continues, yeah, the singer who will be performing the national anthem at tomorrow's game is given a chance to practice over the stadium sound system. I suddenly notice that the team has completely stopped working. Together, they are standing still at attention honoring the collective historic spirit of our armed services' pride and sacrifice. Seeing the Navy Leapfrog team at attention serves as poignant reminder that this group is committed to duty, sacrifice, and a larger cause symbolized by our red, white, and blue. The helicopter is now within earshot, and we leave the field. You guys know what kind of helicopter it is? It's an AS350 Bravo II. It's the A-Star is what they call it. Mm -hmm. These guys actually do a lot of the tours at the Grand Canyon and the Vegas tours and things like that. It's the same aircraft we actually used in San Diego, same type of airplane we used in San Diego for the swoop comp mm -hmm. back in June or July last year. The jumpers will be free falling through the sky within 30 minutes. And back at the vans, there's a noticeable shift in the group's energy. we get into the vans to drive over to the parked helicopter. There she is, in all her beauty. We spot the helicopter and park the vans in the grass beside it and unload the parachutes. ATC may hold us to the south and have us do a south to north regardless of uppers, Okay. just based on traffic and things like that. So there's a chance that we might be having a south to north run. Okay. We'll After a brief conversation the about wind. the changing winds and air traffic control, the team begins what is known as a dirt dive. 
The jumpers huddle up on the ground near a parked helicopter as they finalize gear inspections. Ready for me to come down? Ready. Coming down. Here they simulate the plan for exit, canopy opening, and in-flight maneuvers. And then honestly, it'll be pretty much just on you when you want to put the flag out. We'll try to keep you in the three stack until 2000. Okay. But if positionally, we got to put you out. Mimicking their planned actions physically and verbally counting and repositioning themselves to ingrain and review the jump plan. Brakes ready and bring it up. Nice and carve it in. Yep. Boom, separate and avoid the paint. Cool. Sounds good. Andrew, today's jump master, calls air traffic control to confirm that the team is tracking for an on-time jump and flight time. I just want to call and give you guys an update. Winds are looking good for our jump here at Sam Boyd Stadium today. We're going to be taking off in Landmark 28 from Sam Boyd. We're going to go wheels up at 1250, do a streamer pass at 1255 from 41 MSL, 25 AGL. Uh, and then from there, we're going to climb up to 61 MSL, 4500 AGL. Uh, and for three jumpers, getting out right at 1300. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks. So that was to Las Vegas Tracon or the air traffic control guys. This stadium sits right on the approach for McCarran International Airport for their 2-6 run-in, which is their main run-in. So with it being Friday in Vegas, there's a ton of air traffic coming in. So we're just calling to mitigate with them all of the potential aircraft issues. Whenever it's time for us to jump, they're going to move them to a different runway, give us the airspace for the 14 minutes or so, and then let them back in. Do you know who the pilot is? Yeah, so our pilot today, he's a retired Navy commander, helo pilot. When he found out that he was working with the jump team, he was pretty excited. So what we're going to do is, before we jump out, I'm going to present him with our coin. It's kind of like the Navy tradition, you know, so I'll, I'll shake his hand and then we'll jump out. He's going to have a story. He's going to be so excited. Yeah, like that. It's remarkably casual for this part of the jump, or the not jump of planning, you know? I mean, it's a lot that goes into it at this point, but between talking to FAA, or all the other plans, travel, packing, kind of calm before the storm. Well, you know, the, the trip lead, days and days before this, he's talking to the local towers, coordinating with the aircraft guys, FAA, last minute waivers and no TAMs and different things like that. So right. the trip lead really takes the brunt of it on his shoulders. Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of administrative stuff, a lot of training, a lot of man hours that go into each of the jumps. Yeah, but I definitely think everybody on the team feels very lucky to be doing this job, really just doing this on behalf of NSW to kind of represent uh, for the entire community. Yeah, that kind of the pilot arrives to meet the team next to the parked helicopter. Nice to meet you. Cool. So uh, we've done our site survey, everything looks good inside. And I just talked to Tracon, so they're tracking a 1250 wheels up, 1255 streamers, and 1300 three jumpers away. They're still good with the altitudes we discussed yesterday. Streamers at 2500 AGL, jumpers at 4500 AGL. So it's looking good on their side. Good. We were looking for the exit just to get us all out and as little time as possible. I'm actually gonna spot and jump master, and then whenever it's time ready to go, I'm gonna climb out onto the strut, move to the rear side of the door. Then Bennett's gonna get out on the strut. He's gonna cue the exit, ready, set, go. He'll lead off, I'm gonna bleed off, and then Luke will chase us out. We're gonna be opening within a couple of seconds of exit, basically building and flying it in from there. All right, guys, I'm gonna close you up. All right. Watch your elbows, knees. The helicopter takes off and heads to altitude as the drop zone safety officer informs them of the constantly evolving wind conditions on field. Streamers are dropped by the jump team from the helicopter to measure the current wind direction and speed just before the jump. Streamer data as follows, 100 yards. This information is relayed to the DZSO on the field as a final check for wind conditions at altitude. Affirmative, push was on the lower end, 1500 and below. 
Roger, climbing altitude. Winds on the lift, 11 to 13, occasional gust to 15, I'll copy. We're headed to altitude at this time. Hybrid DZ, Roger, two minutes, you are clear to drop. break off of the group formation and fly down, landing close together. The third, flying a huge American flag beneath him, lands last. The support team rushes to collect the flag as it touches down and the jumpers collect their canopies. The whole team quickly gathers up to begin an immediate debrief recounting any timing or execution issues when the jump is still fresh in their minds. On behalf of the United States Navy, Navy Recruiting Command, and Naval Special Warfare, it gives me great pleasure to present to you your United States Navy Parachute! They will repeat this entire detailed process tomorrow and across America throughout the year in over 50 different locations, executing the Navy Leapfrog's mission to display special warfare excellence, arriving on time, on target.